Okay, cool. All right, so uh, I'm Yudet, and uh, well, at KTH we work with robots, which means we kind of use the same methodology that you use, but we use it very differently. So we, we take a generative model and really generate something that then do, does something in the real world. Um, so I, I assume that mm, some of the concepts I will talk about today are maybe a bit foreign to you, but I will try to take it slowly, all right? So, um, in artificial intelligence, one of our goals is to create rational agents, which are agents that can um, act in the real world autonomously without us having to uh, program them all the time. And what, what is a rational agent? Well, there's, I think there's many um, definitions, but one I put here, um, which I will go through in detail later on. So, a rational agent is an agent that has preferences in this world, that uh, models the world with uncertainty, of course, so that it can um, try to manipulate these models before actually doing something in the real world. And finally, it choos should choose actions that are optimal with respect to these uncertain models. So let's use this robot here as an example. Does this have light? Uh, this? Yes, okay. Uh, so this is our robot, and our robot has one preference, especially it wants to move the green ball into this red square here. That is, of course, a very easy preference. If you have an, an autonomous car that has many preferences, it wa wants to go somewhere and it doesn't want to hit anyone, and so on. So we will just stay with very easy um, examples. In order to choose an action that will actually move this ball into this um, square here, we need to know what our actions actually perform in the real world, which means we need to model the real world with expectations, and we need to have conditional um, expectations on what happens if we actually perform an action. So the robot knows that this ball will move with a certain velocity if it pushes a bit and if it pushes harder. And then finally, the robot can try to find the action that will maximize a function over the outcome of its action, where this function actually um, has a reward part which says how good this action was that it performed. So in this case, for example, we could have a reward of um, minus one for every time step that the ball is not in the square, and plus one if it's in the square. So it will choose the action that moves the ball as fast as possible into the square. In a real world example that we worked on last year, I think, uh, we have a human robot collaboration problem where we have the human and the robot trying to manipulate this plank here jointly so that this ball moves to a certain position on this um, line which means our robot has clear preferences because it knows where the ball should be. Well, that if we have just a robot and it doesn't know anything about the world, it needs to learn what its actions actually perform on the world. For this, we use internal forward models. And these models are functions that map the current state and the action to the change in the world state that will um, come after this action. So the state of our robot is the position of the end effector in um, x and uh, no z in x direction and the angle plus the position of the ball, the distance from the ball to some goal, the velocity of the ball and how much force the robot um, perceives here which indicates how much effort the human needs to put into. So if the action uh, which our velocities would be, I move my end effector up, then of course the plank would look down, so the change in the state space would be my hand is up here and the ball rolls down fast. Uh, all right, so now we have a model of our environment. The problem with this is that it's highly nonlinear, so we are not very likely to find any function that models this uh, nicely, which means what do we do if we are uncertain about anything, we are Bayesian and um, find a prior for our functions and integrate over all possible functions. 
Um, and this is where my favorite statistical uh, idea comes in, uh, Gaussian processes, which are basically the distribution over functions where we say that any uh, finite number of random variables is jointly Gaussian distributed with a mean function and a covariance function. And our observations are then noisy um, observations of this Gaussian here. Usually we say the mean function is zero because it's mathematically feasible. And we s use often the squared exponential as the covariance function which imposes a smoothness prior. So then when, you, when we want to compute the likelihood of our output y given x, we simply integrate out all of our functions and get to a product of independent Gaussians, which is very nice. How does this look in real life? Well, let's assume we have this blue <coughs> line here and we have sampled this red dot. Then our um, Gaussian process will, be, uh, will indicate that this is the mean function and the variance is always the gray around here. So every point on the x line is now jointly Gaussian distributed with this point here, um, which means if we sample more points like we have down here, then we can uh, estimate the function that we actually sampled from while still having an uncertainty measure about where we have not, not um, found anything. All right. So now we have this as our forward model which means we have our clear preferences, which is to move the ball, and we have modeled everything with uncertainty. Super. Now we have to find uh, actions that actually bring us closer to our goal. And this we do with reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is, has been forgotten for some while, I think, and now it has a revival due to deep learning, but we didn't use deep learning for this. Um, so in reinforcement learning here, you learn a function that maps your current state and the action you to perform to an expectation of the reward that you will perceive until infinity. Um, which means this is your immediate reward and this is what will come in the future. Instead of modeling a reward, we model a cost, which is just the inverse, right? Which we model as a function of the distance to the goal of the ball, the velocity of the ball, so that it stays still. And finally, we also want to reduce the effort that the human needs to put into so that it's not only the human that controls the ball. Um, then if we have found such a function, we can simply find the best action that minimizes this function, which means it minimizes the expected cost that we have at uh, state S of t. Since we don't have Q, as usual, we also put a Gaussian process prior on that. And now the problem is that we need to learn this function, which is very hard, right? Because you have costs until infinity and you don't know all of these costs because they are in the future. Luckily, uh, you can do this iteratively. So what you do is that you determine the, um, no, the forward model of your state of S of t and A of t. And then you can compute the immediate expected cost, which means you integrate over all possible outcomes of your action at, at the current state times the cost at that future state. Then you can uh, have to compute also the Q value of being at the next state and taking the next optimal action, which would be an estimate of your future reward from the next step and on one, uh, onward. And finally, you can update your Q function by simply taking the immediate um, cost plus the expected future cost. And if you do this while operating on the robot, um, you can basically iteratively update this function. Yes. So now, we have an estimate of a function that gives us the optimal actions. The problem is that we are operating on a robot that costs, I think, $200,000. So you don't want to choose any action 
that would break this robot. <laughs> and um, therefore, we need to take the uncertainty that we modeled into account. And for this, we use Bayesian optimization, which usually is used for finding parameters which minimize your costs better than the last parameters you had. But we use it instead for finding an action that is safe. So as you remember here, you have the mean that we estimated, and you have the variance around this function. And if we only would go and try to minimize the mean of our cost here, then we would most likely choose something here, which means we would choose the point where we are highly uncertain about whether we actually estimated the function correctly or not. And therefore, instead, we take the sum of our cost plus the sum term of the variance um, that gives an, an, as, us an estimate of how uncertain we are. So I assume we would more likely choose something around this data point because we have already observed something there and we are certain that we know what would happen when we choose this action. And this gives us very safe exploration, plus we can select actions under uncertainty. Yes. So now we have an uh, irrational agent that has clear preferences and that models uncertainty and knows how to choose actions un in these uncertain conditions. Yes. So now <coughs> here we have a video. This is a PR2 robot that, yes. No? Yes. I don't, do you want it? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> no, it's too late. Okay. Okay, so this is the PR2 robot and my colleague Ali. And right now they're just um, per performing random actions in order to sample from the environment so that the robot can learn the four work models and estimate um, the Q function as well. As you see, you should be very careful here. We broke it, so it's <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't cheap. <laughs> All right. Um, so now it has trained, and I think it should move the ball to this position here. And you see that during the first try, it's still a bit unstable, the whole system. But it succeeds. Um, yes. So in the second try, it's a bit better. Yes. It's a, you, know, you have to be careful because it could also just be the human that, that does something better. This is not what you want to see. <laughs> <laughs> um. right. All right. Um, but that already concludes my presentation.